we ask that your Holy Spirit have free course in our life and let your word go forth as the two-edged sword. And teach us, Lord, to say and do what is right and pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I got two words for you from the Sunday school lesson. Everybody listening? Okay, you all tell me what the subject is. Everybody, everybody ain't listening. Everybody ain't saying. What is the subject? Present for ever. Jesus or his father has the three O's. The three O's. The first one is omnipresence. He has all power. The second is omniscient. He knows everything there is to know about anything. The last O is omnipresence. The subject of our lesson. He is present for ever. You hear what I'm saying? Forever. How long is he present for? Forever. Forever. Ever and ever. From the beginning of time until the ending of time, God is present. Jesus is speaking here now from John chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus says to us, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. How long? Forever. Forever. Jesus is getting ready to leave the disciples because his work on earth was about finished. He finished the work that his father had him to do, that he was sent here to do. And uh, his time is about up. Jesus was 33 and one half years old. Most of us are older than him. Uh, 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 and getting there, if we ain't there yet. But Jesus was born for a reason and a purpose. And that was for two save mankind. And all that was done out of his love, his great love. How you know how much you love us, Reverend Mac? Turn to John 3.16. Hey, buddy. For God. How love? So love. He just didn't love the world. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, the drunkard, the druggist, the uh, prostitute, the adulteress, the adulterer, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but but what? Have everlasting. Y'all say it like y'all mean it. Have everlasting. Have everlasting life. Yeah. What's what is everlasting life? Eternal. Somebody tell me what is everlasting life. For ever. Ever. That's what our subject says. Present for ever. Now, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. And it's a shame that some church folk, look out, Rev, some church folk don't know that. Why Jesus came 
why he lived, died, was buried, and raised on the third day. Because they don't hear it enough. When the preacher preaches or when he teaches, I was taught in school that we always mention the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't y'all know we came that same way according to the Bible in our First Corinthians chapter 4? For we all were baptized by him in death. And when we were raised up, we were resurrected. Now, we are to go and be a witness for him. You cannot witness if you don't have any power to witness. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in downtown Charleston, in North Charleston, in Goose Creek, in Mount's Corner, in the Tri-County area, Berkeley, Charleston, Dorchester, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina. It doesn't matter where we go. Not only that, People watch you and see how you live. You are to live your sermon every day. What do you mean, Reverend Mac? Well, if you read the Bible enough and get the Bible in you, watch this. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Now, that scripture says, that scripture is talking about Jesus but sometime, y'all, sometime, that greater is he can be Satan. Mm -hmm. Amen, like. Amen. <laughs> because he come, his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. And destroy. Is he doing his job? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, he is. <laughs> the Bible tells us that in the last days, Mother going to be against daughter. Father going to be against son. Son going to be against father. A daughter going to be against mother. This is in the end. But we must be, like the young lady said this morning, steadfast, yeah. immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. People, people ask me all the time, Reverend Mac, how you, how you, how you uh, know all them scriptures? I'll tell you how I know. And this is how I know. Jesus told me in St. John chapter 14, verse 26, We just read part of it here. But verse 26, Jesus told us, he told me, I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter, yeah. which is the Holy Ghost. Watch these next two words now. And he, he signifies a person shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you so in order for what so in order for you to know what he said to you you got to read Amen. hallelujah Amen. what he said to you yeah. and I declare when you read it he will bring it to you yeah. that's his job So you don't have time to look at other people. No, you need to check yourself. 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 
Paul tells us in Corinthians, let every man, let every woman examine themselves. I don't have no reason, and I love it dearly, looking at Sister Mac. I, I need to look at Reverend Mac. And it's not about title, y'all. It's never about title. I was a deacon. I was a Sunday school teacher. I was a preacher. I was a pastor. It's not about title. It is who you are in representing Jesus Christ. And if you do that, he will be with you forever to lead God and direct you. Amen? Let me read this, this introduction. Let me read this first line here. One of the most significant blessings for any congregation of believers is a great leader. Lord knows God sent us a great leader here at Jerusalem. Every preacher, uh-oh, is not a great leader. Yeah. Watch out, Mac. Mm-hmm. Remember I said, if you can't say amen, say ouch, ouch. Ouch. <laughs> ouch. I'm here to tell you. Because, and Paul wrote in Romans, how shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except he be sent? All preachers are not sent by God. You you hear a lot of preaching prosperity and this, that. I listen to Joel Osteen. I've never heard Joel Osteen one time speak about the Holy Spirit. I, I'm not, I've heard him a lot. He got a big congregation. But somewhere in that time, you need to talk about Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit can do for you once you get him in you. He's got to be in you because if he's in you, he's going to come out of you. Remember in sermon we preached a few Sundays ago about the tongue? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says what comes out of your mouth comes from where? Heart. Your heart. Yes, sir. So if your heart's not right, right. your speech is not going to be right. All right. All right. Amen, like Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen. <laughs> So you have to do Martin, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said, and I will always remember this, he said, the time is always right to do what is right. Ain't that true? That goes for anything. If you could do something right, plan to do it right. Don't change it because the Lord gave it to you to do right. And if you do right, God will be pleased. And y'all know it is impossible to please God. You got to have faith in God to please him. He says, if you have faith in me, I'll be rewarded. He said he's a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. You got to go for it. Seek him. He said, ask and it shall be Seek, knock, (laughs) those, that word shall is definitive. That means it will happen. Ask and it shall be given. Now it might not be given in your time, but God knows when to to give it to you because he's going to give it to you in his time. And his time is never late time. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all, I'm winding it up now. Y'all, y'all scared of something? Okay, you ain't scared. I'm sorry. A good leader is one who cares enough for the spiritual well-being of those under his or her influence to help them get from where they are specifically to where God wants them to be. God wants you to be all you can be. And let me share this with you now. Don't get mad. If you don't get equipped, mm -hmm. you will get whipped. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If you don't get equipped, you will get whipped because the world is looking to whip you so bad. The word of God is not debatable. You don't argue the word of God. I hear people argue the word of God and, and I say, Lord, they don't know. You don't, have, you don't ever have to argue the word of God because God says what he means and he means what he says. And he says this to us. Love one another as I have loved you. He didn't have no puppy love. He had real, genuine love for us. He loved us all the way to the end. And if the Lord saved you, he loves you. Because that's, when he came here, the Bible said he came to seek and to save those that are lost. The church is a hospital, y'all. Sin sick people come here to be healed yes. Yes. by the word of God. How you know that, Matt? Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Isaiah says, but he was wounded mm -hmm. our for our transgression. Yeah. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. healed. Yeah. You yeah. have to believe that. You are healed. Healed by the power of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might not always feel like it, but keep on talking. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Never give in, never give out, never give up. Okay. I'm almost done. Uh, similarly, I'm an introduction. A great leader is one whose leadership is based on the love of every interaction uh, with, excuse me, with, uh, based on the love of Christ, I'm sorry, reflecting an unselfish concern for others. Heard a young lady said, in the message this morning that, and, and the Bible tells us that we ought not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, but we ought to think soberly. You know, you, you, I'm serious. You have to read the Bible to understand. When you read the Bible, the Spirit of God will speak to you. I'm not standing here, y'all. It's, it's just, a vessel standing here telling you what the Lord would have you to do. Y'all see, I'm usually sitting, but I'm standing because I feel in my spirit the Lord is healing my body. And y'all, I'm dealing with a lot. But hallelujah, anyhow, 
I told, I told uh, uh, Brother Graham Grant this morning, and I'm telling y'all, when the devil come up against you with anything, mm -hmm. and God, through Jesus Christ, gives you the victory, mm -hmm. you can look the devil in his oh, eyes yeah. and tell him, hallelujah, anyhow. anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> I guess some people think I'm crazy, because I was, I was telling about Grant, them, those men at the Dickens Convention, I left them. They got a saying to go back to their church with. Because they, when they see me, hallelujah, anyhow. But you got to know why you saying that now. That ain't just a saying. You got to know why you saying that. Because Jesus has given you the victory over the enemy. Y'all know we sing that song? Uh, and the world can't do me no harm. Uh -huh. Jesus has given me victory over the enemy, and the world can't do me no harm. Uh -huh. I ain't scared of the world. Let me tell y'all something else, believers. Y'all got more power than Satan. Yes, sir. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm telling you. Yeah. You got God-given power. Oh. Satan cannot defeat God's power. Yeah. Satan was one of the chief angels in heaven, but because he wanted to exalt himself above God, God kicked him out alone and says, oops, out of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and he wasn't kicked down to hell. He was kicked right here on the earth. So he came down here to mess up our thing mm -hmm. with the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to, here it is, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord yeah. mm -hmm. with all, Lord, not some, uh -huh. with all of our hearts yeah. and lean mm -hmm. not to our own understanding yes. in all Lord, thy know. ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You can't get away from that. And if you do that, he is present with you. How long? Always. Y'all remember that song? Always and forever. <laughs> Take your time, man. <laughs> and now. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you got to go back yeah. and bring them things up. Yes, sir. I hear you. <laughs> but look here, uh, 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 y'all. This is my, this is my passion because I don't want to be unequipped. I don't. I don't want to be unequipped. I want to be equipped because I'm not. If I'm not equipped, I will get whipped by the world, by Satan and his imps. Look here. Uh, you know what we learn to do, y'all? We need to tell people and mean it. I love you. Amen. Y'all hear what I say? Yes, and mean it. Yes. That's if you just say it and don't mean it, that's just lip service. Uh -huh. That's that tongue. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Up. Oh. <laughs> lip service. Yeah, lip service. God says, y'all uh, 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 praising me with your lips, but your heart mm -hmm. is yeah. far from me. Yeah. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the Always and forever. <laughs> dig and dig. Take your time, man. That's all right. <laughs> Go ahead. This, this is a couple of comments. Yes, sir. You, you spoke about Joe Osteen, and I'm not familiar with his ministry. And beloved, because you talked about how, how big his church is. I heard Little Deacon say years ago when we were having an intense conversation in church. 
He said the majority don't have to be right. Just, be, just because you're in the majority, that don't make it right. As per our lessons, the, the relationship between God, between Christ, between Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God is oneness. Is, is oneness. That, that is a relationship between them. When, 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 at, at this time in, in, in Christ's ministry, he was at a point where he knew that he wasn't going to be around that much longer, and he was ministering to his disciples to leave them with what they needed to carry on the work that was so important. And he said to them, as you said, I will leave you a second helper. But Christ knew he wasn't going to be there. Who that helper was going to be was the Holy Spirit. But there's a catch to this. There's a catch to that. And, and the catch to the Holy Spirit being there is obedience. obedience. If, if we weren't obedient, if we didn't study God's word, if we didn't follow God's word, then the Holy Spirit wouldn't be there for us. And Christ needed his disciples to know this at this time because he knew he was going to be gone. He knew they were going to be in trouble because he knew his people. And so he wanted to leave them with this obedience so that they'd know how to reach the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, Jesus and y'all, we must learn to obey. I learned this from Deacon Nelson. We sang the song, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Jesus, y'all, Jesus did not leave us without help. A lot of, a lot of your friends, when trouble comes, they just run off and leave you. But Jesus said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So here we go with the subject of the lesson. He is present forever. Never doubt that. When, when you doubt that, you are letting God know, I don't, I don't, I don't trust you wholly. Never doubt God. Never doubt Jesus Christ. Never doubt the Holy Spirit. And this one other thing, this is one other thing I must say before I take my seat. You never can separate the three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Cannot separate the three because they are all God. God the Father, God the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. I was in a church setting, and I'll never forget this. This young lady got up to make remarks, and she said, the Holy Spirit got more power than all of them. I, I said, I said, oh, my Lord. That comes from lack of teaching. Like I say, you, when, you, when you read and study the word, you, you, your heart will let you know when somebody's not saying something right. Because the word of God is in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against. Bless you. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you so much, Reverend Mac. My brothers and sisters, uh, uh, Deacon Willie was supposed to teach Sunday school this morning, and uh, when I got a text around about 6.30 this morning, I just uh, resided myself that I would just come up here and teach the Sunday school lesson. I don't know how Reverend Mack got wind of it, but he actually said, Deacon Dean, I'll teach Sunday school this morning for you. I said, well, okay. All right. I ain't got to worry about getting up here this morning. But anyway, we thank you all for your, for your, for your attention. Thank you this morning for uh, just coming up this morning, uh, even though this is fifth Sunday for the ladies' uh, uh, we thank uh, Brother Deacon and Sister Grant for their daughter, Samonte, for just standing. Uh, maybe, maybe, yes, sir. sometimes we don't, we don't know how difficult it is to stand before an audience to, 
share a word, especially when you got some folks with some, with some frown faces, you know, but God is still good. Amen. Uh, next week, Sunday, uh, as we continue the journey with the Sunday school, uh, we're going to have different teachers. Uh, next week will be Brother Middleton to stand up here and to share a word with the Lord, and eventually we'll get others too. But, you know, just be encouraging one for another. Amen. The word says, be ye prepared, because you never know when your lot will come up against you. Your turn, and the word says, be prepared. Amen. Uh, let's pray. Turn to God, our Father, we thank you again for your word this morning that was shared. We ask you, Lord, to continue to order our steps in your so precious word that we'll be a workman, not being ashamed of the gospel, but as much as possible within us to share this word that can change lives. In Jesus' name, amen.